my dearly beloved in Christ. Today's feast of the divine maternity of our Blessed Mother formerly was celebrated only in certain dioceses. But in 1931, Pope Pius XI raised this feast to a second-class feast and extended it to the entire church to honor this great privilege of our Blessed Mother, that of the Divine Maternity. Now, can you imagine that Almighty God chose his own mother? He selected her, and he endowed her with every grace, every blessing that would make her worthy to be his mother. And so we say that all of the privileges of Our Lady flow from this great privilege of her election to be the mother of our Divine Lord. Theologians give eight privileges, with the Divine Maternity nine altogether. And they divide them into the four negative privileges and the four positive privileges of Our Lady. Now, we must not think of the negative privileges of something bad, that connotation of the word negative. Rather, it is a negation of something bad, a freedom from something bad. So the four negative privileges of Our Lady are freedom from original sin, freedom from any violation of her virginal integrity, freedom from all actual sin, and freedom from the corruption of the grave. So first of all, first of all, our Blessed Mother is free from original sin, and of course, that is the privilege of her immaculate conception. Second, she is free from all violation of her virginal integrity, and we refer to that as her perpetual virginity. Third, our Blessed Mother is free from all actual sin, and we refer to that as absolute sinlessness. And finally, freedom from the corruption of the grave, her assumption into heaven. So these are four privileges of Our Lady that flow from her election to be the mother of God. But then there are the four, what are called the four positive privileges. Four more privileges or graces granted to our Blessed Mother. First, her perfect holiness, that is, uh, fullness of grace. Second, the mediatrix of all graces, that our Lord gives his graces to her to dispense to whom she wills and as much as she wills. Third, she is the spiritual mother of men. So her spiritual motherhood is another great grace. And finally, she is queen of all angels and men. So queen of heaven and earth. So these privileges given to our blessed mother to make her worthy to be the mother of God. Now, Pope Pius XI, as I said, instituted this feast in 1931, and he did so to commemorate the 15th centenary of the Council of Ephesus. The Council of Ephesus was convened in 431 by the Emperor Theodosius II in order to answer or respond to the teaching of a bishop named Nestorius. Now, Nestorius denied the unity of person in Christ. He so separated the two natures of Christ as though there were two persons in Christ. And it was the Council of Ephesus that defined the Catholic dogma of the Incarnation and that Jesus Christ is one person with two natures, the divine and the human. But Nestorius, in his heresy, said that Our Lady could not be the mother of the divinity, that she only gave birth to the human nature in Christ. She gave birth to Jesus as man. So he denied that title of the divine maternity. And the bishops assembled at Ephesus, as I said, in the year 431, and they defined the true teaching of Christ, one person with two natures. And they also proclaimed that Mary deserves to be called the mother of God because she truly is. 
In the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, the prophecy was made, a virgin shall conceive a bear and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Well, the word Emmanuel means God with us. So she brought forth a son, and that son was God. And then at the Annunciation, the Archangel Gabriel said to our Blessed Mother, when she said, how shall this be done? He said, the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee, and the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and therefore the, the one to be born, the Holy One to be born, shall be called the Son of God. And finally, we could cite the words of Elizabeth at the visitation when Our Lady visited her cousin, Elizabeth said, Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? The mother of my Lord. So those are a few quotes from Scripture that we could use to point out this truth, that Mary is truly the mother of God, the divine maternity. When the council was held in 431 at Ephesus, it was held in the city in Asia Minor, where Our Lady had lived. Because when Our Lord was dying on the cross, he gave his mother to St. John, that St. John would take care of our Blessed Mother after our Lord's death and then his ascension, and also that we became, she became our mother. He said to St. John, Behold thy mother, to Our Lady, behold thy son. We were all represented there by St. John. And so Our Lady is not only the mother of God, she is our spiritual mother. So the people of Ephesus, because Our Lady had lived there for a time, were incensed at this terrible heresy of Nestorius. And when the council fathers defined that Mary is deserving of the title of mother of God, they were just filled with joy. They were singing hymns when they heard the definition. They conducted the bishops to their residences with lighted candles and again joyfully singing hymns that Our Lady's honor was maintained by the council, that her title of divine maternity was upheld and defined. So let us rejoice today on this wonderful feast day and let us give thanks to God that he not only created this beautiful creature endowed with every grace to be the mother of his divine son, but that he also gave her to us to be our spiritual mother. And let us turn to her in every need, in every difficulty, in every temptation, because we know that our mothers love us and will do anything for us. How much more the mother of God who is the spiritual mother of men, will give to us the graces which she has in her hands to dispense as she wishes, will give us all the graces we need to persevere and to save our immortal souls. Let us never hesitate to turn to her as children looking to their mother for help in every need. Let us rejoice in her title and let us run to her in every trial and difficulty and call upon her by that beautiful title of Mother, Mother of God. As we say in the Hail Mary so often, so many times a day when we say our rosaries, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. We remind her of this great privilege that she was given, and we ask her thereby to grant us all the graces we need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.